Cars need fuel, computers need electricity, and even pacemakers need batteries. To operate and function efficiently, machines of all shapes and sizes need sources of energy. One emerging new source is the fuel cell, which converts chemical energy into power. Fuel cells are energy uh, providing sources, the power source. Two research professors at the New Jersey Institute of Technology are at the forefront of fuel cell technology and have collaborated on a series of innovations that help make the energy conversion that occurs within fuel cells as efficient as possible. We made a fuel cell which was a hundred times more efficient than anyone had ever made before. And so this is a case where one invention led to another invention. The inventions made by Reginald Farrell and Zafar Iqbal were produced using a field of science called nanotechnology, the study and application of materials between 1 and 100 nanometers in size that touches nearly every area of science. Think about the diameter of a human hair. Think about something much smaller than that by maybe a factor of 100. That's kind of the regime that uh, nanoscientists uh, work in. The collaboration of Farrow and Iqbal started in 2005, and initially it had nothing to do with fuel cells. Farrow was trying to invent a new method to measure electrical signals in living cells. What started this project was uh, a goal that I had to make the world's smallest probe of biological cells, and not just make the smallest probe, but tap into it with many, many probes so that I can see what's happening on both sides of the cell at the same time. Farrow went to Iqbal for his expertise and understanding of something called a carbon nanotube, a form of carbon in the shape of a cylinder that is extremely strong, conductive, and just one nanometer in diameter. And the electrons then flow uh, rapidly through the nanotube. So the electrical conductivity and the thermal uh, conductivity is rapidly enhanced. Farrow thought carbon nanotubes would be ideal to measure the electrical signals of living cells. Through their collaboration, Farrow and Iqbal solved the problem of how to deposit these carbon nanotubes on the surface of a metal. How it works is you take carbon nanotubes that you've already made through any means and you mix them up in a solution and uh, you use an electric field to draw them to where you want, almost like a magnet. With this successful new method, Farrow and Iqbal filed multiple patent applications with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Their breakthrough also helped Iqbal solve a problem within his own research on a different type of fuel cell called a biofuel cell. You can think of a, a biofuel cell or any fuel cell as a battery, as a battery that is being powered. Biofuel cells are able to convert chemical energy from organic materials such as glucose or sugar and turn it into power. He thought that depositing the carbon nanotubes using the same method that we were using to make the probes might give him better electrical contact for his biofuel cell. To create the biofuel cell, two carbon nanotubes are deposited just microns apart from each other on a silicon wafer chip. Enzymes attached to each carbon nanotube act as catalysts and speed up the chemical reaction to convert the glucose into energy, a key component of any fuel cell. In the area of fuel cells, the catalysts that one uses in fuel cells, they need to be at a nano level for it to act. The innovations still continue. In 2012, Iqbal was part of a team that received funding from the National Science Foundation to develop a nitrogen-based catalyst designed to replace platinum in hydrogen-powered fuel cells. Iqbal says nitrogen would be a better catalyst because it is less expensive and more durable. While biofuel cells are not yet used commercially, Farrow and Iqbal hope that one day their biofuel cell could be implanted in the human body to power biomedical devices, such as pacemakers, defibrillators, and prosthetic limbs. In the biofuel cell, as long as the person is alive, if it's implanted, uh, there will be always glucose being generated in the body. And uh, that glucose will be the, uh, the, source, uh, the source of power. Through the power of the innovation process, the strides made by Farrow and Iqbal in fuel cell research show us that the smallest source of energy had the potential to have an enormous impact on everything from cars to pacemakers.